again. There you go. You know, knees are really an interesting topic because knee pain can affect everything we do from walking, mm -hmm. hiking, any kind of sports activities. And you know, I've been doing sports kinesiology work since 1986 on patients. I've had a chance to work with gold medal winners, um, world champion boxers, um, all pro NFL, NBA players. Um, and it's been just a joy to be able to come alongside them, figure out why things aren't working uh, with their knee and what to do about it. And what I want to do is just go through common um, knee challenges and problems, but then also give you some real helpful tools of what you can be doing yourself to decrease the need for care and, uh, and try to turn things around for your knees so you're not having to deal with chronic pain. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so um, as you guys are hopping on in that chat bar, if you have any questions, you guys can type in the chat bar and then we'll we'll answer those as we go. Um, and then some of you guys are joining us from Facebook Live, hello, and maybe Instagram Live. So welcome everybody, so glad to have you on. I'm just gonna continue to admit um, everybody here who's joining us. Welcome, welcome, glad to have you on. Um, alrighty, so we want to, um, you know, make this super effective and um, kind of to the point for you to give you all the advice and tools you need to get going. So let's talk a little bit about knee pain. What is um, going on? What are some common knee issues that we might see? Okay, that let's just talk quickly. Pain? Let's just do a little review of the basic anatomy and then we can talk about what ends up going wrong, what kind of injuries there are, and then what can be done about it. So here's your kneecap right here, also called the patella. You can see on the inside a bone, and it's attached to the patellar ligament, um, and this ligament here goes and attaches to the quadriceps. And then inside of the knee, you have your meniscus, you have the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus, and then the anterior anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments and then you have your uh, medial collateral ligament and your lateral collateral ligaments on the side and this little bone over here is called the fibula so this is the femur and the tibia now the most common thing that i see in knee problems is actually where if if the normal knee the way it's tracking um, correctly it's tracking right in these grooves but the most common uh, problem that I see that leads to meniscus tears, if it's not like a sharp injury, like a ski injury, or someone gets tackled in football, and it's a blunt trauma, that's one thing. But the more common thing is for people's knee just to start bothering them and start hurting. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the most common thing I see is that the knee does not track in the groove like it's supposed to, like this, but that it'll actually have muscle tightness and adhesions that'll start to twist the knee in the, in the groove and it actually torques the knee so mm. that when it's moving, now it's not right in the groove, it's actually tweaking the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus and this is what leads to a meniscus tear. So now let's just take a look at some of the, the basic muscles that are associated with the knee, and I'll get out my my netter's uh, flip chart. And for this, I'm going to take my glasses. So let's just look at this together real quick. So here you have the the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius right here, and this goes along and it joins down into what's called the iliotibial band, which goes down the side. A very common. Uh, diagnosis is iliotibial band syndrome. And then in the back underneath the glute you have the hamstring muscles in here and the gracilis, but there's the main hamstrings. In the front you have your anterior compartment is made up of the quadriceps, quad meaning there's four of them, uh, vastus lateralis, medialis, uh, and your uh, intermedius, and um, You've also got your sartorius over here and your rectus femoris is the long one that goes from the top to the bottom. 
And then you've got your adductor group on the medial component in through here, the adductor magnus, longus, pectineus, all those muscles. So when those muscles are in balance and they have common strength um, and flexibility from side to side, that allows the knee to actually track in the groove. But what we find commonly is this, is that people will have injuries along the way. Now let's just go through quickly what happens in a, in a basic injury so you can understand this concept. It's really important. What we, what we have over here is we have a basic like an injury, a sprain strain, and you're gonna have swelling basically for about three days after an initial injury. And then the stage two of the, how the body heals this is called the congestion phase. It means it's gotten swollen, and that lasts for about 24 hours. That initiates what's called the stage of repair, and where that's where scar tissue is laid down for the next up to 12 weeks. And if you don't have good movement and motion during that time, during those 12 weeks, you end up with a whole bunch of random scar tissue that looks like this instead of normal tissue. And that scar tissue, looks like this. You'll see this scar tissue, and that scar tissue contracts the muscle. Now, commonly what happens in people's, they'll commonly sprain strain their back, and then that scar tissue will develop around their sacroiliac joint and their uh, gluteus muscles. So if that scar tissue is on there and it tightens down on that, what that's going to do is it's going to pull on that, that iliotibial band, and if now, since it's attached to the femur, if it comes down and twists the femur like this, now we've got a knee torque that's developing because instead of tracking right in the groove like we talked about, now the femur is getting torqued like that, and now we've got this abnormal torque of the knee. And this is what is the most common problem that we find with knee problems. And this is what causes people to have torn meniscus. Mm. So what is a meniscus? Let's just go through this real quick. Here's a normal knee. Here's the meniscus on the inside, which I showed you. Here's the anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate ligaments. But here's a tear of the meniscus. You can see back here, a tear of the meniscus here. That usually happens as a result of that knee torque, unless it's a, a blunt trauma, um, an acute injury. So um, what we find commonly is that the best way to get after and loosen up a lot of this scar tissue are through different um, techniques. A lot of them can be done at home and a lot of them, them are done in the office. So in the office, what we'll usually do is we'll do a series of deep tissue work, um, deep fascial work, we'll use uh, a technique called Graston. We use a machine called the Deep Muscle Stimulator. We also use active release technique to help um, to loosen and open up the, the uh, scar tissue. We also use cupping massage um, to bring the blood up through that old scar tissue and help to loosen this up so we can actually get the knee to start tracking in the groove again and make that problem go away. Mm -hmm. The other thing, um, so yeah, what it's were you interesting saying? just because we, I was just having knee issues yeah. the yeah. other day. Hey, 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 stop, stop, stop. Um, so I got it. Okay, right. so um, we were just doing this the other day, and because I'm like, my knees have been hurting. Like every time I work out, it just seems like like they kind of go out, and I can't do like jumps and things like that. And you found that it was my glute muscle was too tight. Yeah. So you gave me exercises and stretches to do yeah. to work out that glute and right. start to get the knee tracking back in alignment. Right. So that's what you would do is kind of check like, okay, is the knee not tracking correctly? Yeah. What areas are too tight? Right. So, and my knee is so much better. Yeah. Yeah. That's the beauty of, of learning a technique that we learned in, in school. We've been using it since 86. Uh, it's called applied kinesiology, and that's where you can really figure out which muscles are doing what and what needs to be done for it. These, um, these tools here are some of the best home tools. This is called a Hypersphere Plus. Um, we sell them for the same as Amazon um, does, so uh, we have them here. You can buy them online, whatever you want to do. 
But um, what we do is we use these, you hold your finger on it for four seconds, now the lights come on, and then when you push it the first time, you get the first speed of vibration, two times, second speed vibration, three times, third speed of vibration. Now this can be put underneath your glute and alongside on the inside of your groin, um, down through the iliotibial band, and basically you can move your body back and forth and stretch it while you're using a tool like this. This is really helpful for home care because yeah. when, when people come here, you know, we want to just make sure we know what they want, what they're looking to have happen, and then we want to try to help them get what they want as quickly and cost effectively as possible. Mm -hmm. So meaning that we give people a lot of home care stuff to do so that we can get a much faster result and be much more fiscally responsible, you know, unless people want to throw money out the window, why do that? Why not get a faster result and spend less money and time to do it by you doing your part and we'll show you how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So this works really well when you turn it off, hold it down for about four seconds and it shuts off. Now, the other thing that we use is the same company. This company is called Hyper Ice um, and they've got a rocking company. I wouldn't suggest investing in some of the cheaper knockoffs that are made in China. Um, we've had a lot of patients find them that are about half price but they don't last long, they break easily, mm -hmm. and this, this company stands behind their product. So this is a foam roll, and it has the same technology in it. So this one has an on-off switch on the, the back. Turns on, mm -hmm. and then the little button. First speed, second speed, third speed. It really rocks, and this, could be used on your quads, on your iliotibial bands, up and down. Like so here, right? Yep, on the quads. On the side. The iliotibial band. And, and then even on the glute and the low back, you get on it and roll up and down and down in through here. I especially like the ball, though. Stay, stay there for a second. I especially like the ball in here. For Maria, this is how we fix her knee up third speed and she gets it right in there on the glute right there mm -hmm. and then she brings her knee to her chest she's lying on her back and her body weight is pushing into this and then she starts stretching her knee towards her chest yeah just like that <laughs> while she's laying back against it and you can really find out where your trigger points are mm -hmm. and where the scar tissue and adhesions have developed so you can start to loosen all of that up. Mm -hmm. So this is how we fix most people's knees. Um, commonly, you know, we have an incredible uh, team of orthopedic surgeons that I refer to. Um, if conservative measures aren't um, gonna do it, uh, if you need any kind of surgical intervention or um, injections, things like that, those can work. Uh, one other thing is that as, as problems continue on, we can we can actually lose the cartilage here you see the normal cartilage of the knee and this is osteoarthritis where the there's um you've worn out all the cartilage usually when it gets this bad it's time for a knee replacement mm -hmm. um, there are some um, exosomes and things that can be utilized and put into the joint as a um, an injection that but a lot of times if it gets this far down the road you actually need a knee replacement and if you're going to consider getting a knee replacement make sure you go to a doctor that's going to check your compatibility for different kinds of metals in the in the implant itself like i had to um, have a, a hip replacement and i also went to a doctor who was really progressive and he um, ordered what's called a lymphocyte transformation test which uh, tested my uh, compatibility with different orthopedic materials that would be used in the alloy um, with, the, um, with the, the replacement itself. And I found doing that test that I had a, a, a strong, strong reaction to nickel. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't have gotten a normal knee replacement that had the alloy um, with nickel in it. So I found another doctor that actually ran the tests. I, it was the third doctor I went to, to the other ones who were gonna put, just give me the standard 
replacement and uh, that, that could have really been a problem for me. Mm -hmm. So make sure that if you are gonna go down that road that you, you make sure you get a lymphocyte transformation test um, to determine your compatibility and what kind of uh, joint replacement would be best for you that would give you the best chance of having a, a good outcome and good recovery. So, and then what else in terms of like supplements and nutrition? What would be the best thing for people who might have? Well, if you pain? if you have an acute stri strain sprain of your uh, of your knee or any other joint, um, we recommend two to three cups of organic blueberries a day. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have a product called Ligaplex, and we also have a product called Joint Synergy, and another one called Cyruta Plus. So, based on if it's predominantly tendon issue. Um, versus uh, a ligament issue, I would have different kinds of protocols. And if there's a fracture, we have different kinds of protocols to help um, bone fractures uh, heal up much faster as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot to be done in the nutritional world. Um, we also used a pulsed electromagnetic frequency machine that we put over the joint to decrease the inflammation and have it heal a lot quicker as well. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of things. As well as cold laser therapy. Yeah, cold laser therapy mm -hmm. as well. Thank so, you. You, know, I, you know, I would be happy just to do a complimentary consultation mm -hmm. um, with you if you ever want, you know, a quick look at things before we would, you know, do a comprehensive examination. Um, you know, I'd be, I'd be willing to do that. That's part of my, my purpose and my mission and my, my talent that I want to you know, bring to the world is to see if we can help people. Mm -hmm. So you can call um, the office and um, basically fill out, fill out some paperwork. Ray would sit down with you for a couple minutes, go over the paperwork, and then I can take a look at a knee or a shoulder or something like that for you, um, you know, just as a complimentary community you know, service. Right? Yeah. So for that, you can you can call us at 949-497-2553. You can also go onto our website, healthandbalance.com. We have a new patient special on there. It talks about, you know, doing a consultation, um, but we specifically wanted to offer you guys that have joined us on the webinar today that complimentary consultation. Um, and then also we're having an Aloha week coming up in a few weeks, yeah. uh, which is gonna be March 2nd to the 5th. And that's a really great way to get introduced to what we do here, come and get some free treatment, free consultation. That's a really awesome way to um, get that's, started. Because I, I could definitely check a knee or a shoulder or an elbow or what have you out um, just as a courtesy and then write a little script for a little bit of uh, care upstairs and, and yeah. go from there. Yeah, so that ticket schedule for the um, Aloha Week, you can also go into our website to do that or you can just call us as well and we'll get you scheduled for your visit during that week. Um, so you guys, thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this today, share it with a friend. Um, we'll be sending it out via email and we'll also have it up on our website and it'll be a resource for you. So share with somebody who has some knee injury problems or wants to prevent pain and um, hopefully they'll find it helpful as well. And um, also another exciting thing, we have a detox coming up in March, so stay tuned for that. Lots of fun stuff going on here at Health and Balance. Um, but happy Friday, everybody. Stay healthy, stay well, and we'll see you next time.